Hello everyone and welcome back to the Summit 3 North American Qualifier Phase Number 1. Today we get to find out which two teams are going to make it into Phase Number 2. Oh boy! Woo! In our first series it's going to be a matchup between Void Boys versus Team Tinker. Void Boys upset in their last matchup against the Demon Stack. The Summoner's Whoa. Rift taking them out 2-0. Team Tinker was not so much of a surprise. They stomped, My. and they made their way here. But Summoner's Lord Rift boys. and Mani Beret, both uh, these all-star lineups end up getting upset. It's been interesting. I think Team Marino, Tinkerino, the pretty obvious favorites coming in against Void Boys, but... Who knows? This is the team that Pat Soul is all is actually on, and he's been oh, he's been boy. jumping around a little bit. So yeah, it was exciting. actually between these two teams. People were like, "Oh, Pat Soul's on Tinker now," and yeah, then like, Tinker eh. had a couple last minute changes with their carry player. You can only and, be on one team, folks. And you I, pick we're not going to be on both, obviously. So he went back to his Void Boy squad. They've obviously already proven themselves a little bit, taking out the Demon Stack, mm -hmm. and now it's going to be their biggest test, probably of Phase Number One in Team Tinker. So let's go ahead and, without further ado, we'll hop into the draft at hand and. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Clockwork. Dire team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. <sighs> Dire team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Radiant team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Shadow Fiend. Dire team pick. Ten seconds remaining. <laughs> were we muted that whole time? I think we were muted this whole time. Five you turkey. Remaining. I unmuted. You heard me say uh, it. I know. What's Why did it get back on? Well, I don't. I'm not. I wasn't looking at the Reserve board, man. Time. Did you hit the? 
What what happened? I don't know. I definitely hit it. You heard me. I'm like unmuting mic now, and I hit both of them. Did you hit the select buttons by mistake? I don't know. Are we on? I think we're good now. We're yeah, good. We're check, good. check, check, check. Oh. Yeah, I'm coming. How can we cliff note everything we just Fucking went over? Christ. Well, Pat Soul is a beast. Pink Panda's way too. Flow is. Let's start with this. Hey everyone, welcome hey. back. It's a Summit Three North American Qualifier Phase Number One. We're looking to round things out. It's our first matchup. Team Taker taking on the Void Boys, as it was Void Boys who took out Summoners Rift in a big upset 2-0. Team Tinker stomped their way here, and also we saw Mundi Bure be a big upset as they went down, and we'll get to see that yep. matchup of their winner Bure take on pain coming up next let's go ahead and talk about the draft Zyori it's me and Zyori of course bringing you the casting as always and look at that Void Boys Team Tinker Flo is Bulba Pylai Die Koikfa is back instead of MSS who was standing in for him Pink Panda is way too Void Boys Pat Soul he's a crazy character a lot of mystery behind him 75% Dota buff win rate that is pretty much all we talked about up to this point and Zyori made a good call on the Shadow Fiend I did uh, you, you will have to just <laughs> take his word for it but uh yeah. All right. So now that we're all caught up, that was the crash course of what happened. Our phones are blowing up that we're a bunch of dum dums and we're still muted. So I'll take the blame. Two it just two minutes. Stop. Two minutes here. Coddle guy breaking off the rust here as he gets back to the studio. It's all right. Everyone is filled in up to this point as far as what the hell we were talking about. And unfortunately, because we don't have chat and Twitch chat is out, I don't see people screaming at me. That's true. You know, normally I have these guys as my backup. He's like, hey. Guy. Hey, you dumbass! The sound's off, dumbass! But I don't even have that, so... Maybe you unmuted it, and then you went through your cycle, and then you just clicked it again, thinking, like, Oh, I've gotta unmute know. it, Dude, and my then... fingers were on the buttons, Iori. I don't know. And I said out loud, and you heard me, I wish right I was paying closer down, attention. I'm like, <laughs> unmuting! <laughs> Why would I just, like, lift my fingers and not touch it? Uh, we're off to a good start today, folks. All but right. let's talk about the draft. Now that we have the audio and everything underway, Bristleback has been picked up as the front line meat of the Team Tinker squad right now. So now you got this guy kind of tearing up the front lines. Void Boys could have their full hands full with him. Then you got a, a lingering Enigma who could sneak in there. Plus Shadow Fiend's going to be bringing the right click. Pretty good synergy. Plus you get that minus armor flavor between the Shadow Friend and the Bristleback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Now Frost, the Ancient Apparition, picked up by the Void Boys. Have not he seen him too much recently, but pretty good against those tanky mothers like your Bristleback. Anything you can do to just... Um, well, not really buff up the damage he takes, but decrease the amount of it takes amount of damage it takes to finish him off. Also good against the Shadow Fiend, similar reasons Five there. Seconds remaining. Void Boys, an interesting draft. They've got some Roche control. Not a lot of big team fight though. Mostly single target type stuff. Yeah, it's kinda like I'm looking at it now, you land a good ice blast, Ember Spear can get in there with one to two sleight of fist to really soften them up a bit. Ventral's always there as the saving grace, you know, can help out Clockwork if he gets himself in a bit of a pickle with his initiation, but I feel like they they need more team fight. They need something to kind of bring it all together. The glue of the Void Boys draft right now. The glue. We have a bunch yeah. of sticks. We have a foundation. They need to build that raft. They got to get yeah. the twine, tie it all together. Yeah. They need yeah. probably their safe laner. I would imagine the Ember will go mid. Not the easiest matchup against Shadow Fiend. That may prompt them to put him in this the is safe the, lane. This is going to be the Pat Soul special here at the end. Radiant Lycan has been something he's picked up from time and time. Ooh. And Radiant side Lycan wouldn't be too bad. Though outside of Lycan, they don't have a whole lot of... Oh, they have Ventral side, Spirit. Yeah. Or Dire Side, yeah. Dire Side, they do have Ventral Spirit. But... Outside of that, it just doesn't feel like a Lycan kind of a get-up right here. What else does he typically go for? Morphling, uh, Slark. These are other popular pickups that Petzl likes to run in his arsenal. Hard to say. A lot of options here, and some of it will depend on Ten what Team Tinker do with this final pick. I reckon they're looking for the Ush hero here. Five Not sure exactly who is playing which likes to play Shadow Fiend. Is Ush the mid Shadow Fiend? If they get a quick hero. It's one of those things like if you get a certain hero, they like to switch things up. Kind of like the era type deal. He plays safe lane, but takes the Shadow Fiend. Unless Koikva, who's back now instead of MSS, is like, no, no, listen, listen, young one. All right, listen, listen here, boys. I am the Shadow Fiend player. But I'm pretty certain it's going to be Ush, and they could leave Koikva this final pickup. But that's just my hunch yeah. right now. I feel like Jug would have been pretty good here for Team Tinker, honestly. Pretty good ban from the Void Boys. Mm. Who else in the way of cores? I feel like there's a whole bunch that we're forgetting about here. Who um, matches up I mean, up like, then well. it depends on what you want to get. But Ooh, Storm Spirit. Storm Spirit okay. So not a thriving late, late kind of a game. 
but more as we want to get a lot done in the mid game period and then maybe our bristleback could be a big tempo controller but yeah. as it stands right now that's an off lane bristleback not like the safe lane farm bristlebacks we've seen as mm -hmm. of recent um, and then what could be either a Storm mid or Shadow Fiend yeah. mid. A nice mobile carry, though. Very good against Ember Spirit, who mm -hmm. can hop away to his remnants. Vengeful Spirit with her cheeky little swap. Storm can close that gap, get in there, and uh, try to make it rain. Five seconds remaining. A little so, lackluster, though, in the like stun it. department of Void Boys. Yeah. Chains and then so Missile. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I feel like they're in this conundrum where they need a carry here, but they also need another stun. They could do something unconventional, like pick up a Sven, somebody like that. Um, no, they go Morphling, so, oof, okay. So it is the Morphling grab, Pat Soul Morphling, man. Okay, well, I have some faith that after all that hype uh, we, we put around Pat Soul. My big issue here is, sure, you see the Enigma, you think, okay, Team Tinker, that's a slightly greedier lineup. You've got the dedicated juggler. Let's match that greed with more greed. They've got two carries and then a hardcore and the bristle back. But I feel like the Morphling games I've seen really in the last month or so have been pretty underwhelming. He just takes so much to come online. He really doesn't become scary till he has like three plus items and yeah. it just takes so damn long to get there. But you look at this, Enigma could have a, a 10 minute mech. Shadow Fiend might be working on a Yules, have it close by then. Storm Spirit, probably not really in fighting form, but can at least start moving around. If he gets a couple of kills under his belt, can really get that snowball going. going. Even if Morphling gets some early kills under his belt, oh, yeah. he doesn't really start to get that aggressive. Yeah, it, I mean, the lineup they put together is a lineup that you would expect from this kind of a team where it seems like it's Pat Soul plus his posse. Mm -hmm. It's like all about Pat Soul, and he hopes that his other four goons are going to be able to bring together some space and allow him to really thrive in the late game. Which they've been doing really nice job and nice work with, especially in their series against Summoner's Rift. They definitely created the space. And remember in the first game, it wasn't even Pat Soul. It was their stand-in. Uh, I think it was, it wasn't Burning, but he had Burning in his name. It was like Burning 14-1 or something like mm -hmm. that. He played the Spectre and then Pat Soul came back for game number two, played Spectre himself. Which, mind you, on his Dota buff, he's also a top Spectre player. I want to say top four, top five. So he knows what the hell he's doing with that hero, and, well, he dominated with it. I don't even think he took a kill or a death that game. Very impressive stuff, so, yeah, just kind of going on to that. Void Boys, if they can get Patzel up to a pinnacle point where he can really take control of the game, they would love to do so. Team Tinker, it's more of getting the job done early on, not allowing the Morphs to really thrive in that late game. And around the mid-game yeah. period, that's where they want to, you know, really... Put it on hard. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Team Tinker will have this window in the mid game when they can do a lot of damage, but they aren't exactly slouches going towards the late game either. Shadow Fiend, Bristle Storm can all do pretty well in the late game, scale pretty decently. Maybe not once Ember Spirit is six slotted with a rapier, Morphling six slotted running around, blowing people up with the shotgun, but it's not like they're on this timer where they have absolutely no carry power past the 30 minute mark. But let's introduce some rosters here, Dakota. What do you say? I want to do Team Tinker. All right. All right, Radiant side. We've got Ush, tagged up as a stand-in. He's here on the Storm Spirit. He'll be farming in the safe lane. Flo, a.k.a. Bulba. He's on the offlane Bristleback. What a name. Koikva, the old Koikster. He's going to be on the Shadow Fiend, headed to the mid lane. Way too sexy. The Pink Panda himself. He's in the jungle here on the Enigma, and that leaves Pi Lai Die. One of the European players on this squad here on the Demon Witch Lion. See where he ends up as he plants a ward way down deep in enemy territory. But it's the Void Boys doing the invade right now. Five Hero Smoke. They've got some wards to put down. Yeah, they got one already down. I'm sure that blocks the main camp right there. They're like, we don't want this Enigma to kind of have free roam to do what he wants in the jungle. That could be a problem. And they want to make sure they kind of make his life a little more difficult in the early game. And, and sure enough, like we were anticipating, Quickfuss here, and he's going to be the Shadow Fiend player. I have not seen Ush play a lot of Storm Spirit, to be honest with you. I know he's played it some. It's I don't know how much he's played it as much as his Shadow Fiend, as his Naga, as his Tiny, as his Drow. Those seem to be Ush kind of heroes. Storm Spirit, I'm sure he can play it. He's a very aggressive kind of player. And Storm Spirit thrives most when you know how to make the jump and get the kills and the picks. So I'm curious to see what he's going to be doing with it. But just going on with the roster introductions here, we'll go with the dire side now. It's going to be the Void Boys. Mercy Please is going to be playing your offlane clockwork along the mid. We're going to start as a duel here. It's going to be Beyond playing your Ember Spirit side by side with Fly on the Ventral Spirit. Trying to make life a little more difficult here for Koifa in the early CS game. Along the top, we got Omega Poner playing your support Ancient Apparition. And that will leave the one and only... The exchange student himself, Pat Soul, playing your Morphling. 
You know, with a name like Omega Pawner, I hope I hope they talk to each other as like uh, an army code. You know, like this is Omega Pawner reporting for duty. You know, they make that sound at the end of uh, every every message they relay. <laughs> Red Rooster, Red Rooster. This is the Omega Pawner coming in hot. The Eagle has landed. <laughs> that soul is thriving and flying. <laughs> well, look at this. The Pink Panda. He's off in the enemy jungle. A little aggressive here. Knows that his jungle is warded up. Doesn't even bother to deal with sentries or anything like that. And we'll be able to get away with this. I don't know if Void Boys really expect the aggressive jungling here. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Mercy Please getting harassed, throws out some cogs, trying to chase down Pylai Die, but the booty's first lion will be okay. That's good. That's just what you got to do as you're zoning support. Keep the clockwork busy. You know, if he has his attention on you, he has his attention away from the creep wave. Given that it's only a dual lane, it's going to be hard to completely get clockwork out of the lane and away from the XP. But at least you can help with the CS and help create the space so that Ush on the Storm Spirit can bring in his own bits of farm. All right, how's this mid lane looking? It's beyond falling way behind Quick, but dominating 10 and 3 versus the 5 and 1 Ember Spirit right now. I think this is about what you would expect. Shadow Fiend with the obvious advantage being a ranged hero, having huge auto attack damage. Ember will find a little farm here and there, but I think he'll need the help from these supports to really get some momentum back in this lane. He's only level 2. Pylai die on his way in, has an earth spike, but. Okay, no kill attempt. Thought they might have a go at it. Ooh, Clockwork's going to be able to snag up the DD rune at the bottom. That's a big snag for them. Pilot that was heading that way, but it's going to be a little too late to get a hold of it. And I believe Way2 was able to grab the other rune at the top. Yes, he was. The bounty rune for the Enigma, who is using the enemy jungle. That's very good for him. Oh, and look at this fly able to contest oh. the pull here from Bulba. Bulba wanted to get that pull into the lane and try to get the Creeper Libyan back in his favor, but it gets rejected right there from fly. Good heads up from the support, something you don't get a lot of attention on very often, but making sure you could sustain this Creeper Libyan and not allow the Bristle to get the easy XP range. Oh, first blood down bottom. Oh. Oh, she gets it. Mercy, please. That's exactly what he's saying as he heads back to the well. He just gets a little too close to the lane, had the double damage here and thinking, okay, I can snipe a few CS and... Well, Ush just caught him off guard, loaded up one of those overloads, and hit him with the old Storm Cannon. Yep, he's going with the No Vortex, which seems to be the new style with your Storm Spirit. We still see a lot of the standard Storm Spirit builds where they get some investments into the Vortex, but for this one, it's going all damage, and he's going to Overlord and go to Mercy, please, right now. Mercy could be in trouble here. Have Big mercy. damage. Oh, he gets away, but this is after coming from his previous death. Now he's going to be down so much health. Meanwhile, up and above, you can see now Pylite Eyes in trouble. Gets caught with the wave now. Way too is going to oh fall thereafter. My. Oh, beautiful two-man drop right now for Void Boys. Mega Poner, though, getting really hit from these yeah. Eidolons, but they will be cleaned up. Chilling touch, doing so much work right there on all three heroes. They just couldn't handle it. And finally, the Enigma punished for being in enemy territory. And that's always the concern when you're jungling like that. Sure, you get uh, unchecked creeps that aren't blocked by wards, but you're right near the enemies. And if something goes awry, there is nowhere for your friends to TP in, come and try and save you. You're pretty much left out to dry. Very awkward stuff. I guess with that period now, Way2 will head back to his own jungle and just make do with that. There's a couple of sentries still blocking a camp or two, but by the time he gets over there, those sentries should expire, and he should have a full jungle to get back and working with. But as far as Quota goes, he's level 3 at 4 minutes. Ideally, by now, you want to be at level 5, level 6, so yeah. not your Quota that you'd like to be at for your Enigma, but he'll just kind of have to make the best of it. But Well, even though they get a kill and the Ember Spirit's involved, he even picks up one of them. He is still getting madly out-farmed here in the mid. 27 and 14 on this monstrous Shadow Fiend. While the Ember Spirit still at a humble 14 and 2. Getting a little space to farm in the lane now as Shadow Fiend bottles up a haste rune, but potential kill opportunity here. Pylai die on his way in, turns beyond into a little froggy. They load up the raises. There's your Earth Spike. Few more auto attacks. Haste rune makes it easy for the Koikster. And that's a dead Ember Spirit. Two to two as Shadow Fiend gets a little bit bigger. Well played. Good setup from Pylai die. Knowing that it's nighttime, he could just be right on the cusp of the darkness and then just sneak on forward and get the easy setup with the Insta Hex cast, which just makes it for an easy follow-up. The haste is almost just like the, the frosting on the cake there to make sure you can secure the kill. Mm -hmm. So safe lane farmers comparing Ush to the Morphling by Pat Soul up in their safe lane. Well, Ush has a small advantage, and he did pick up that kill on Clockwork, so it does give him the edge on that front. Both offlaners farming pretty nicely as well. Bulba's hit level 6 on the Bristleback. Clockwork only level 5, but still has a lot of CS to his name, though Mercy Please will get jumped on again. Pylai die initiates with the Earth Spike, and that's just an easy pick for Ush. Secures his level 7, and 
Helps out his bottom line a little more. It is this Radiant side. Team Tinker with a huge lead already, Dakota. 3,000 gold, 4,000 experience at only the six-minute mark. I mean, this is the tempo that they wanted to have when they put together this draft, and that's all behind Pylai Dai, who's been putting in the mileage right now on his line. He's been across the whole map at this point, looking for engagements and opportunities to help his course thrive. Find pickoffs, find early ways to boost themselves up and above so that this Morphling will really have no chance on being able to catch up with the powerhouse duo of the Storm Spirit and the Shadow Fiend. And while well, your Storm Spirit and Shadow Fiend are both top two on the CS right now, but we'll switch it over to Net Worth and see that they're also top two right there with Pat Soul behind by Ooh. over 1K. Yeah, by a big margin. And that's what's scary here. It's not the team tickers in the lead. It's the heroes that they have the lead on. These hard carries that will transition very nicely into the mid game and very well into the late game, especially with an edge like this over the Morphling. Curious to see what item build Pat Soul goes for. Uh, over in the east, you'll see Morphling's favor, that BKB first. Um, out here in the west, more like that Lincoln's first is still the pretty standard core. If he wants to do something a little crazy, he could try to rush the shotgun, mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, a lot of options for Pat Soul. Even just going for a Manta first is a build we've seen some Morphling players experiment with. All depends on when he feels like he needs to come online to start helping out the team. I suppose a Midas could also be an option yeah. if he really wants to turbo farm. But nope, goes back for the power treads to get some stats to his name. I wouldn't be surprised if BKB is something considered. You got a Lion, you got a Storm Spirit. That's a lot of lockdown just between the two of them. I mean, you're talking Earth Spike plus Hex on just one of the heroes. Then you get yeah. Vortex Pool and all that huge Shadow burst of damage. And probably an incoming Orchid that could be on this uh, Ush Storm Spirit, I which it so. will be. He's got the Robe. You're going to need a BKB. A Lincoln's is just not going to be enough. And for a Morphling, stopping off and getting those defensive items first is another step he has to take before he can really try to put the team on his back. So just at the way it's going right now, Team Tinker have a beautiful tempo, a beautiful storyboard for this game. As long as they stay on track, they're going to be looking pretty soon, but or pretty good, rather. Void Boys, they want to change it up a bit. They might need to consider dishing out something here as the mid-game will approach so that they can kind of get things back in their favor. Yeah, absolutely. They need to start reclaiming momentum. Clockwork now hitting level 6. Could be a step in that direction. He has his hook shot. Still not much farm as he's fallen a few too many times, but at least with the hook shot, you can start setting up kills around the map. Ush doing a lot of damage to him. Gets hit by the power cogs. Thinking about a dive, but has mercy on mercy, please. Now at the top, rune beyond. Hex stop. He's going to be in trouble again. Flame guards on, but there's just too much physical damage. Bristleback gets credit for that kill. Omega Poner. He gets owned by a Shadow Raise. Another haste rune on Koikpa. And a two for nil as the battle breaks out about the top rune. Team Tinker, man. They must have had a good breakfast. They are feeling it right now. They just easily anticipate Beyond's going to be going for the eight minute rune and they just kind of set the trap and once again Pylai Dai is right there and at the ready the second he moves up there he just pops in gets the insta lockdown and it makes for an easy cleanup as they also even have way too nearby at the ready it's just as if they knew that that was going to be happening and they just made the call and made it happen man this is now going to be more of a struggle Pat Soul, his team we're count you know he's counting on them to be able to create the space hold their own they may not be as individually talented as all of these big star names on team Tinker and they're well you can see it right now in the early play. But here goes a smoke now from Void Boys. They scout out up and above, but they're really nowhere near an opportunity to open up here. It looks like Flo, though, is going to be able to work with a big stack right here. He's been the only quiet one on Team Tinker so far as your Bristleback. Yeah, he's still farmed very nicely, though. We checked in on the offlaners. Both got a baseline of farm. The key difference, though, is Flo didn't die. 1-0-1 one, and, one, and uh, 37 CS. Yeah, not too bad if he can clear out this ancient stack. That'll certainly help his bottom line. Void Boys, though, they want to intercept it. They see what's going on. There's your hookshot in right onto Flo's backside. Two points in the Bristleback ability. Not going to be enough to keep him alive, but but there's going to be a turnaround. Bristleback goes down next as Ush joins the party. They'll chase down Mercy, please. He's going to go down second. Now Beyond on the run. He's got the Flame Guard available, but it's going to expire in just a couple of seconds here. There's Ush. Catches him with a Vortex. A Hex as well. It's already a one for two. Maybe a one for three to boot. And it is. He gets into tower range for even extra damage coming his way. A double kill for Ush. And another successful team fight for Team Tinker. Just makes for easy setup. They know that Pat Soul's not going to be there. He's obligated to stay in that lane, build up the farm, and just try to be a titan. But his team begins to crumble, and they just keep getting the best of him. You think that there'd be an opportunity for Void Boys to make a sneaky play and jumping in and contesting those ancients, but Team Tinker are right there and rallying behind them. The quick rotation from Ush allows him to make the jump into the fight, and it clearly pays off. He is now 4-0. 
on this storm spirit and he gets a regen rune life just keeps getting better and better yeah absolutely this is a happy storm spirit 10 minutes in first oblivion staff and another 1600 gold if you can get your orchid by the 15 minute mark that's a good standard number you're feeling pretty good it's not crazy but you're having a good game you get it before that like 12 13 minutes you're balling out of control. Were you the person I was talking about, like, the standard? Like, there should be, like, a book no. as far as... I think standards it might have been Yeah, the standards for timing. What's the standard for the Lincoln's Morph? What's the standard for the Lincoln's Weaver? That's a good idea. You the just have to update the book the every time theory. a new patch comes out and tweaks the timings, though. That's the only you know, shit the part of it. standard for Dire Enigma. You know, the level 7, five minutes in with your Soul Ring mech at the ready. <laughs> that sounds like a fun idea, but painstakingly tedious to put together. <laughs> this oh. is the standard, as people have decided. No, I just it's so funny how you keep hearing that, but it really is. It just goes to show, you know, based on the timings and where you itemize, how successful of an early game or a mid game you've really had. And it kind of shows where the tempo's going. But Mercy, please, Uncle Jesse in some trouble. Oh, mama. The pink panda gets that one. Ush continuing his dominance. That's a completed orchid at 1130. That's better than the standards, Iori. That Whoa. is better. Hashtag math. Top lane, smoke rotation. It's a Yule Scepter, Dakota. That was, you can take it away, man. Omega's dead. <laughs> Omega now fly. Is dead. He's in trouble. He's deep hit out. Whoa, it's a finger. Pylai die. Gets another one. Void boys. They're getting run over here. Yeah, this is a clinic right now from Team Tinker. They're looking fresh and ready. And Void boys are not ready right now. This is not their time. They have to keep holding on. But this is going to be too much for Patzel even himself to handle. As he's still been 0 0 0, not looking to get involved with too much. Still, he's only 78 26 Ugh. CS. Koikva, who's been getting involved, making man fights happen, still has higher CS than that at 111 17, and his net worth still is king at about 8K. On the back of that, now they take out the top tier one tower. It's Bulba who gets the last hit on that one. This Bristle even hasn't really had the chance to just kind of show what he's made of. He is still 2 1 and 5, but. Man, oh man, this this is already feeling like it's going to be a, a, a rough game for Void Boys. It is already a rough game. A 12,000 gold lead, about a 12,000 experience lead. Yeah, that's 1k per minute that Team Tinker have picked up for themselves. It is just Pad Soul that's farming okay, and it is just that okay. You've got your Ember Spirit. He's working on phase boots. He has drums of endurance at least, so a little bit of uh, ex or extra HP to his name. But this is the big problem with the Morphling and why carries like this have fallen out of style when you can pick up an, uh, a Shadow Fiend, a Storm, who can transition to the late game but still have such a presence in this early game when Morphling is just a, a walking pile of water. Well, we'll be on. Remnant himself to the mid lane right into Malphus and he will have to shake that one off. But the DD's going to be popped here on Quake Double damage. And the right click start going on the tower. Bang. Boom. Don't. And he is just going to start withering it down slowly. Half-life already. What are they going to do to stop this? There's the jump forward from Ush. Gets the pull. Gets the silence on the beyond. Can they bring him down in time before he can remnant away? They can. Gets the bring down with the assist coming out from Bulba. Very nicely done. On the back inside, Midnight Pulse oh. to break down the trees. But it's Koikva dominating now as he's able to take down the clockwork. Mercy, please. Wrong time to do that, Dakota. Double damage on the Shadow Fiend. He just had his blueberry breakfast. He's feeling buff. He's feeling strong. You do not want to square up against that guy. No, certainly not. Now he TP's bottom. He sees the Omega Poner. We'll see if he can scout him out in the tree line here. Omega Poner just wants level 6, for God's sakes. I need my bread and butter skill, the Ice Blast. What am I going to do without it? Now he's just desperate to get away. Blink Very Dagger. Scary. That's a nice snowball item on the Shadow Fiend. Yeah, that's a hero delete whenever he has his ultimate up. Hush, by the way, somewhere is killing someone. It was too ugly to show on camera live, so we just did you the favor right there. Censored by the FCC, the future of Dota looks like a nice rotation from Pylai, Die, and the Pink Panda. Multitude of stuns to set it up. Now your oh, mech mama. complete on way two. As if it wasn't hard enough to break and take down Team Tinker, now you got to muscle your way through a... Extra bit of sustain in this mechanism pop. We haven't even seen a black hole yet pop up this game. But I oh, there's the jump on the fly. They see him. Bam! Boom! Whoa! Whoa! That was a lot of hate right there from Pylai Die. The hate that's, trains that's, that's, that's the cloud nine coming out from him right now. <laughs> She's <Yeah>. so angry. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That vengeful spirit did not have a chance. She goes down 15 minutes in, 15 to 3. Still on that nice little kill per minute mark. Yeah. And the they are at a Ooh. wow. 16k gold lead already. Yep, the, uh, the the domination train is coming the way of the Void Boys, and Conductor Koikva is at the helm here. They are just walking around enemy territory, bumping into people left and right, and it seems like anytime someone on Void Boys is scouted out, 
It translates to a kill of some sort for Team Tinker. Now the Dyer will group up Dyer's his five, finally down. doing a little five-man Dota here towards this bottom Maybe tier one tower. tower. Best case scenario, I think they hope for a tier one for tier two exchange, but uh, easier said than done. They're not even at the tower yet. Finally moving into it and clearing creeps while their tier two is already at about half health. Yeah, There's a, a big window for Tinker to defend here. Yeah, they're just starting to poke at that tier one bottom while the tier two top's going to be going down. It's I'm curious to see if they even bother. They could just keep pressuring the lane and force Void Boys to come back before they even finish it off. Slowly but surely they get it down, but yeah, one TP already to lead things back. Team Tinker, they're just like, we're going to try to end this one. They move right in, and they start pressuring this tier three. I think they send back the line to try and interrupt some TPs if possible. Now they dive on the Vengeful Spirit. Orchid's there, but no follow-up. They see all the TPs home. Lion, if that was his quest, he's unsuccessful. They all TP back. Oh, jump in for Mercy. Gets the catch on the way, too. With battery salt. He's going to have to hold on for now, but Whoa. he has got the mech. All right. Pops it out. Still has Black Hole. Soul Ring if he needs the bit of mana right there to use it, but... The job's done for them. On the way out, Clockworks tries to do a sticky little play, but that's not going to be happening. He yeah. goes down again. Rough game for your Clockwork right yeah. now. I want to say, what is he currently sporting? Zero and six. Yeah, life's hard. Poor Rattle Trap. It is a, it is a tough life. He's just trying to put down his power cogs, get a little electricity going, and there's just so much in his way. Vengeful Spirit, dead broke as well. Just a wand and some brown boots. At least Omega Poner, he's picked up his level 6 Ice Blast. That's I guess good. that's helpful. That's Ugh, man, even the Morphling. Pat Souls farmed as best he can, but now they're safe lane farmer even with the offlaner on Tinker. He's got a Perseverance. He's just not remotely scary. Now a BKB up on Flow. BKB almost up on the that Shadow Fiend. that freaking frog. My goodness. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a bullfrog. That, that's a big... That's, that's, a, that's a big frog. There's a bullfrog bump its ass when it hops. I don't know, dude. I, I haven't looked at the bullfrog up close. I think it does. Oh, oh, Ice Blast comes flying on in. There we go. Beyond trying to do a little chip damage he can, but Roche falls. It is Ush that gets the Aegis go zipping on him. There's your black hole. Mercy and Pat's all caught inside of it. Vengeful Spirit Swap will interrupt it, but it'll cost Venge your life. A fast three for nil for the Void Boys. Now it's four for nil. Team Tinker just dominating again. Is it going to be a full five man wipe? Well, we're not going to live to find out because they GG. Boom. There it is. Godlike streak for Ush. One for five around the pit. Whoa. 21 to four. Game one is right. a massacre. Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Summit three in a qual. First match is over. And Team Tinker look pretty damn good coming into this. Void Boys. They're going to have to try to shake that one off because that was not the Void Boys I saw yesterday. No. Maybe just a little outclassed here against Team Tinker. That was one of those games that was just tough to watch if you were a Void Boys fan. Just outmatched. I, I think we were both on the same page about the Morphling and how long he'll take to come online, but that wasn't the only problem. All of their lanes kind of fell apart. The Clockwork fed way too much. The Bristleback got way too much out of the safe lane, and, well, we saw how well that Shadow Fiend did mid on that Ember Spirit. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing else to say about it. Each lane for Team Tinker got what they wanted out of it, and they just showed that, well, that was their period of time. Well, mid game approached. Storm Spirit got his kills. Shadow Fiend got his kills. I mean, there's nothing they could do about 11 it. 11 minute Orchid on Ush. That's pretty much all you have to say about that game, and you can probably guess how it went. Yeah. Uh, yeah. MVP Team Tinker. <laughs> <laughs> Void Boys. Hopefully they can shake it one off and come back because it's match point right now for Team Tinker. It's still a best of three. It is single elimination still, but, well. Team Tinker win this one. They qualify and make it to phase All right, number boy, two. boys, turn on that Taylor Swift. Shake it off. Haters going to hate. You got to shake, shake, shake. Let's see if you can bring this one home into a, into a game three. All right. And with that, we'll be back. I'm Carl Guy. That's Ziori. We're beyond the summit. Please hit that follow and show us some love and support. We'll be back in just a moment with more Dota action.